Today I'm going to answer a question from a student. That student is Rajiv Pandaya. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And the question is on the video about small signal amplifiers and boils down to why do bipolar junction transistors amplify current and not voltage? And the answer is they do amplify voltage. I think that's an unfortunate term. I avoid using it. I prefer to say that they are current controlled rather than voltage controlled, but even that is not a good way to put it. So let's take a look at how bipolar junction transistors work and see why we say they amplify current. So I'll make a simple common emitter circuit here and we'll take a look at how it works and why we say that they amplify current. There's our base input, our collector output. So the reason we say that a bipolar junction transistor is current controlled or people say it amplifies current is because there's a very convenient relationship between the current that flows from the base to the emitter and the current that flows from the collector to emitter. And that is called the HFE. And let's say this one has an HFE factor of 10. Now this is actually quite variable depending on how much current is flowing and what the bias voltages are, but all things being equal, what it means is that under the right conditions, if I put a microamp of current into the base, I'm going to get 10 microamps into the collector. So the HFE is the ratio of base current to collector current. And it's a very convenient ratio. Uh, in this case, an HFE of 10, I put in one microamp, I get 10 microamps. If I put in two microamps, what am I going to get? I'm going to get 20 microamps. Very convenient relationship between the base current and the collector current. But what about the base voltage? Well, Remember that the base to emitter junction of a bipolar junction transistor is a forward biased diode under normal operations. So let's take a look at how that works. So I'll draw the diode up here just to remind us of what we're talking about. It's going to be forward biased, which means we have a higher voltage on the anode and a lower voltage on the cathode. Conventional current is going to flow in that direction when it's uh, forward biased. And we're going to draw the graph of the voltage compared to the current. So let's take this up to about 1.0 volts and let's see 0.5 volts will be right there and this is the current. Let's say we can go up to 1 amp. Uh, let's make that 100 milliamps, a small signal transistor. And let's take a look at the current versus the voltage. This is something we've done before, but we're going to reiterate it. Let's put that at 0.1 volts. And how much current are we going to get? Very, very little. So the little dot right there that shows that we're getting a very, very tiny current when we put that 0.1 volts there. Basically, we don't have enough voltage across the diode to turn it on. It's like a check valve where you have a spring and a valve closing mechanism. And when you try to push current against that spring, it's going to take a little while before that spring opens and before the current can actually flow. So, so it takes a little bit of force to start making that valve operate, where it takes a little voltage to make this diode begin to operate. So it's really not conducting very much, just a very, very tiny bit of current. If I double that to 0.2 volts, I'm going to yeah, maybe double that, but it's still going to be a very, very tiny current, not too much going on there. But once I get to about 0.5 volts, things start to change a little bit. So uh, let's put up here at 0.8 volts. And as I increase the voltage across that diode, I get something that looks like that. And so somewhere around 0.7 volts is the typical voltage that this operates at because once I get past 0.7 volts, I get a sudden cascade of current and a tiny change in voltage makes a huge change in the current. So here with a diode is the idea of my base current compared to my base voltage. It's a nonlinear relationship. It's an exponential relationship. And so trying to control that 
bipolar junction transistor by controlling the base voltage it's going to be something like balancing a pencil on point so let's go take a look at the circuit again so I'm going to have a base voltage of yeah, 0.6 to 0.8 volts between the base and the emitter. So I only have a range, an operating range of about two tenths of a volt. So operating this in that range is going to be fairly tricky to do. Now, if this is a big power transistor, I may have a wider range, maybe as much as 0.6 to 3 volts, but that's when we have a lot of current flowing into that base and therefore a lot of current flowing into the collector. But your typical small signal transistor is going to operate between about 0.6 and 0.8 volts. So I have a very small operating range. So it's just not very convenient to think about the transistor being controlled by voltage as opposed to being controlled by current. So yes, changing the voltage does change the collector current, but the range is so small, it's just not very convenient. So therefore, people say that the bipolar junction transistor amplifies current rather than amplifying voltage. I prefer to say it's current controlled rather than voltage controlled, but you can see it's not really, that's not really any better. So it's just, we say that they amplify current because the relationship between the base current and the collector current is a very convenient uh, linear relationship. So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of the collector current to the base current and we'll see a big difference. So here we have the collector current on the vertical and the base current on the horizontal. And let's make this up to, oh, uh, how about 100 microamps? And make this over here up to 10 microamps. And so if I start with one microamp of base current, I'm going to get 10 microamps of collector current. So that would put our plot point right there. Now if I double that to 2 microamps, I'm going to get 20 microamps of collector current. So 2 and 20, that puts my dot right there. And if I double that again to 4 mi microamps, that's going to give me 40 microamps of collector current. So that puts my plot point right about there. Let's double that to 80. Excuse me, that's going to be 8 microamps of base current. And that's going to give me 80 microamps of collector current. And so I get this nice straight line. So very convenient linear relationship between the base current and the collector current. But if I do the base voltage, remember the base voltage relates to the base current in a nonlinear way. So it's going to have the same relation to the collector current. So if I turn this into the base voltage or the base to emitter voltage known as VBE, the voltage from the base to the emitter, and let's put our one volt here and I put in 0.1 volts. I'm going to get almost no, almost no base current, so almost no collector current. I double that to 2.2 um, .2 volts and I still get almost no base current, therefore almost no collector current. Double that again to 0.4 volts still almost no base current therefore almost no collector current but then i double that to 0.8 volts and here's what happens and i get that nonlinear relationship so once again i only can operate between about 0.6 and 0.8 volts so we can draw these a little easier to see so my operating range is only in around there and you can see it's even nonlinear down here so the reality is I'm going to be more like 0.7 volts to 0.8 volts to where my where I'm fairly straight in this line. If, if we draw it a little more 
realistically at an angle. Yeah, that line's fairly straight. Let's try to keep it. There we go. It's a fairly straight line, but huge changes to small changes in voltage and only have that very, very tiny operating range. So, it's just not very convenient to think of a bipolar junction transistor as being voltage controlled because of the nonlinear relationship and the very tiny operating range when we get into the linear area, where the current has a very nice linear relationship between the base current and the collector current. Now, in the case of field effect transistors, we say that they amplify voltage, or I should say they say because I say it's voltage controlled. A field effect transistor, if we draw a fairly generic field effect transistor here. The current that flows into the gate, gate, drain, and source, the current that flows from the gate to the source is very, very tiny. In a junction field effect transistor, this is a reverse bias diode, so we have almost no current flowing through it, just basically leakage current or uh, minority carriers if we want to get into that uh, aspect of understanding how they work. Very, very tiny currents, and so we really don't have an easy way to relate to what that is. Yes, we change those tiny currents, we get changes in the current from the drain to the source, but it's like, again, balancing a pencil on its point. And when it comes to MOS, transistors, there's virtually no current flowing from the gate to the source. So we can't really use that as a parameter to see how we are controlling the field effect transistor. But under the right conditions, there is a linear relationship between the gate to source voltage, known as VGS. There's a linear relationship between that and the drain current just like the collector current of the bipolar junction transistor is directly proportional to the base current under the right conditions. So I hope that answered your question. If it didn't, please ask again. And if you have any questions, please put them into the comments. I answer as many as I can. And sometimes other people will answer the questions. And so we get a little bit of interaction there. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.